Today I'm going to show you how a few months ago I used Pneumatics George wet and dry vacuum to clean our disgustingly dirty kitchen floor and the odd mark on our carpet and car upholstery. But is George the perfect machine for these jobs? Let me stress, this is not a paid for review video. I'm going to be completely honest about the disadvantages and advantages of this machine. And for that reason, I'll also be throwing into the mix the market leading Vax Platinum Power Max together with the free steamer that comes with it, both of which I bought yesterday specifically for this video. And also this Karcher steam cleaner I bought from Screwfix a year ago. Now, whilst there's plenty of carpet cleaning in today's video, my original quest was to find a hard floor cleaner to tackle this kitchen floor because living in the countryside with a dog, it's a constant pain trying to keep this floor clean and one we're not very good at and don't do regularly enough. And the problem with a typical mop and bucket is that with the first plunge of your mop into the bucket, you're basically cleaning the floor with dirty water. And with carpets, even if you get as much of the stain out as possible with kitchen roll, the only option you've got with the rest is to dab it with a sponge further into the carpet and hope it disappears somewhere in that mystical region between the carpet and backing and underlay. So the solution to this problem is a wet and dry vacuum. But when we talk about wet and dry vacuums, we're talking about two very different beasts. The simple wet and dry, like the Titan I previewed several months ago, with its admittedly powerful 1400 watt motor, but woefully poor accessories and an ill-fitting bag. Vacuums like my Titan can be converted to suck up wet spills or drain the odd block sink, but there's no additional cleaning process. And what I mean by that is these basic wet and dry vacuums don't spray and clean as well as suck up the wet stuff. So their use is pretty limited. And in fact, I haven't used my Titan once in wet mode. And then you've got machines like this, which go a step further because they jet out clean water as well as vacuuming up the dirty. And crucially, they keep the dirty water in a separate compartment. So you're only ever cleaning your floor with clean water. You wouldn't think this is a big deal, but it really is, as you'll see in a minute when I come to clean the kitchen floor. Now, the Holy Grail is a wet and dry vac that agitates jets and vacuums all in one cleaning chamber. And vacs seem to have this nailed with their Platinum Power Max. But when you're paying £250 for one of these machines, my view is you want something that isn't just a one trick pony. The vax comes with a hard floor attachment, but is the machine any good on hard floors? There's hardly any information or reviews on the internet on this, and I'll be putting it to the test today on this floor. Secondly, machines like the Platinum Power Max can't be used as a standard regular dry vacuum. So if you haven't got the space or budget for two separate machines, what do you do? Well, this is where George comes in, and it's where we're gonna to start today's review. George is basically the only vacuum you're ever gonna need. It's a complete all-rounder. With the standard pneumatic accessories that you'd be used to with the likes of Henry, you can vacuum dry floors and carpet. But it's more powerful with a 1060 watt motor compared to your 620 watt motor in a typical Henry. And you can even buy this rotating head because whilst much is made of the fact that pneumatics don't have a powered head, this airbrush is as close as you're going to get to a powered head and does a fantastic job clearing up after our molting dog. But with a quick conversion you've got a completely bespoke wet vacuum and it really is quick. In the time it's taken me to say this, I've managed to convert the vacuum from dry mode into wet by simply removing the Tritex dust filter and HepaFlow dust bag, inserting the clean water canister and ball float mechanism, and attaching the vac hose and spray nozzle feed tube. Very quick word about the accessories because when everything arrives in the box, it might look a bit intimidating, but it really isn't. You've got these three standard vacuum tubes that you'll be accustomed to if you've got a Henry. In fact, you use these for standard vacuuming in dry mode, but with a slight difference. See these plates here? For the carpet vacuuming fishtail nozzle and hard floor accessory, you connect the trigger to this plate at the top of the tube, in turn connects to the vacuum hose, as you'd be familiar with if you're a Henry user. And then the water feed pipe for the spray nozzle goes in like that. And then the spray nozzle attachment simply slips over the plate at the other end of the vacuum tube. And then for carpet cleaning, you attach the fishtail nozzle. And for hard floor cleaning, you attach this one. Don't actually know what this is called. For upholstery cleaning, you entirely dispense with this bit of kit and you simply connect the smaller fishtail nozzle to the vacuum hose and then plug the water supply tube into the nozzle like that. 
I should stress that whilst I bought the Vax a couple of days ago, Pneumatic kindly supplied me the George back in December last year when I got in touch with them and explained about my quest to find the perfect hard floor cleaner. But they have no editorial input whatsoever in this video and that's the way I like it. Now, whilst this floor is beautifully clean now, you should have seen it before I started, with the grout that should have looked like this being absolutely ingrained with dirt. A few things to mention. George has a fairly massive clean water tank. I can fit five liters of water into it, but you probably want to aim for four to four and a half liters, just so it's not sloshing too near the top when you pull George around. You're told to add 40 milliliters of the cleaning fluid supplied, which handily has 40 milliliter graduations on the side of the bottle. But there's no talk about hard floors on the back of this bottle, only carpets. I think George is robust enough to take other cleaning solutions. I think the key is that they're low foaming, and so next time I'm gonna use this on my hard floors. To tackle the floor, I used the reversible hard floor attachment with its scrubber in conjunction with the spray nozzle on one side, and squeegee vacuum on the other. With other wet and dry vacs like the Platinum Power Max, you've got to get your other standard vacuum out first and thoroughly vacuum the floor before you tackle it with the wet vac. Not so with George. The design is so robust you can just get on with the job and the powerful power flow pump extraction system just sucks up everything in its path. Even gravel from the drive that I accidentally sucked up whilst wet vacuuming the car floor mats. And the contents of the dirty water tank are testament to the power of this system. You'll obviously have noticed that the scrubbing is fairly manual with this vacuum system and could be seen as a disadvantage. However, I don't see it that way with my floor. I'm convinced the dirt in the grout was far too ingrained for any system like the Vax with its integrated powered brushes to dislodge. The most effective way to get it clean was to use the scrubbing brush on the vacuum and also a more targeted combination of grout cleaner and when I was a bit braver, bleach, with an old toothbrush initially, and then more effectively with a Karcher steam cleaner. George was very important to this process because the spray nozzle enabled me to then drench the treated grout lines with water and then quickly vacuum them to a near dry state, thereby removing all the dirty water from the floor. So that's the hard floor done, and I've got to say I was bowled over by the results, but what about carpet and upholstery cleaning? And if you're a bit squeamish, you might want to look away now. Obviously, sensing I was doing this video, my dog obliged by throwing up her food all over the carpet and her dog basket. And my son also decided to walk through with his muddy shoes on. I was skeptical of how effective the two fishtail nozzles would be without any brushes to agitate the carpet, but I needn't have been because the process of pumping the new chem infused water into the carpet and then the powerful vacuum extracting it got the carpet completely clean and the fishtail nozzles are robust enough that you can, if you want, give the carpet a good scrape with them. And the dog bed was so clean after being clean with the small fishtail nozzle we didn't even have to put it in the washing machine afterwards, sparing the washing machine all that dog hair. One other point on this I'll come on to when carpet vacuuming with the Vax. By not having powered rotating brushes, the carpet pile isn't turned into a furry mess, but left as pristine as it was before I started cleaning. And you're not left with wheel marks all across the carpet. But the, perhaps the biggest revelation was when George set to work on the car, because by starting in standard dry mode to remove months of grit, dirt and dust, and then convert into wet mode, we were showcasing the true strength of George as an all-rounder. Does it ever annoy you that no matter how much you beat or vacuum car mats, you can never get all the dust out? Not anymore with this wet vac, and I was astonished at how the small fishtail nozzle removed the marks on the seats with a bit of help from some carpet spray and a scrubbing brush. Again, the process of drenching the stain with water and then powerfully vacuuming it up is in my opinion why this machine is so effective. Now, 20 past six in the evening. We did this work at about half 12 this afternoon. Just under five hours and these seats are completely dry. And the transformation is extraordinary. It's like we've got, it's like we just bought a new car. So moving on to the Vax Platinum Power Max. Let's start in the kitchen as we did with the George. Now clearly George removed most of the dirt from this floor, but two months have elapsed since I recorded that part of the video and the grime is building up again. As I said at the start, Vax provide a hard floor attachment that clicks onto the machine, but when I was initially researching for this video, even the customer services rep at Vax who I phoned up said that this machine was more suited to carpets. So I'm interested to see how we're gonna get on. The first thing I've noticed is that by inserting the hard floor attachment, which is basically like a large, slightly inflexible squeegee, you're already taking the large roll of this one here out of play. 
because if I use this block of wood here to simulate the floor, whilst this impressive row of brushes can slide up and down, albeit well, they're not forced down, they're only sitting there by gravity, so I wonder how hard those are actually brushing. The primary brush roll here is completely taken out of action and isn't, as you can see, touching the floor. Putting the machine together was pretty straightforward. It comes supplied with a couple of bottles of this cleaning solution and impressively a nice bag to keep the hose and other accessories in, which Pneumatic would do well to learn from and supply with George. The vacuum and accessories on first impression seem pretty robust and well made, although I wasn't very impressed with the thin, cheap looking wheels compared to George, and I'll come on to this in a bit when we tackle cleaning the carpet. Whilst George is fairly noisy, the vax is ear splittingly so. which I'm acutely aware of, suffering as I do from tinnitus for sanding too many floors back in my youth. So you might laugh about this, but I had no option but to put my ear defenders on whilst using this vacuum. Okay, a few things to point out about this machine. You have to dry vacuum thoroughly before washing. And so guess what? It was step aside vax as George came to the rescue. I think the instructions are misleading on adding this solution. Don't make the mistake of adding nearly half a bottle to the solution chamber in the false assumption that auto mix will only add as much as is necessary. Even though it suggests in the instructions that any solution not used can be poured back into the bottle. Instead, in my experience, the whole lot drains into the clean water tank, meaning I added far too much solution in the first run, and this could have accounted for the leak that developed at the back of the unit whilst I was vacuuming. Not to mention the large amount of water also spilling onto the floor. So it's much better instead to follow the instructions on the solution bottle and add 40 mil or whatever the correct amount is to either the auto mix solution tank or the clean water tank. And fill it up, you have to do. As the tanks are so small and possibly fearful of letting them get too full after that leak, I'm regularly having to head back to the sink to empty the dirty water and replenish the clean. So how did I get on with it? Well, you can see from these clips that it took quite a few passes to clean off some basic dirt and on uneven floors, or perhaps all hard floors, it feels like the squeegee's getting caught from time to time on the forward stroke and so you have to give it a bit of a push. The small upholstery and revolving nozzle are hopeless on hard floors with no squeegee and whilst its vacuuming performance is reasonable, it definitely didn't leave the floors as dry as George. But all in all, I was reasonably happy with how it performed. There's slightly less effort than when you're using George and you can't fail to be impressed with the transparent design of the front nozzle and the sight of all that water being vacuumed up. And perhaps I'm being a bit unfair here because don't forget, George had a massive helping hand from the combination of grout cleaner, bleach, and the Karcher steam cleaner. So at this point, we should give a mention to the Vax steam glide that came free with the vacuum. It's got a floor head that can be used on hard floors in conjunction with a microfiber pad or on carpets with the glider. Personally, I don't care for any steamers that require a microfiber pad because it's just another thing you've got to wash. But I was very interested in the grout brush and the small brush that can be used in place of the floor head. The grout brush was as effective as the Karcher small brush you saw me using earlier. And by cleaning the grout first with this and then going over the floor with the Platinum Power Max, you're going to achieve excellent results. The only downside is the shocking reviews I've read of the Steam Glide online which points to the fact that it just doesn't last very long. Which you'd expect it to for £70, although admittedly the car chart I used earlier is a lot more expensive. A final point on using the Platinum Power Max on carpet. And we got off to a bad start because I decided to use the pre-treatment wand on a long-standing stain on the carpet. But after multiple attempts, I just couldn't get the wand connector to engage properly in the solution tube port. You'll see there's no such problem with the hose connector and notice the very different design between the hose connector and the pre-treatment wand connector. In the end I gave up trying to secure it in place and just about got it to stay in long enough for me to treat the stain. I'm going to say the wand is a bit of a gimmick, particularly given the vacuum comes with this pre-treatment spray. As you'd expect, the vacuum performed pretty well, although those tiny, thin, cheap wheels do leave a mark on the carpet. And interestingly, all those powered spinning brushes left the carpet pile looking a lot more furry than it had done before in marked contrast to the pristine state it was in after being wet vacuumed by George's fishtail nozzle. I also found it a complete pain to clean out, even after cleaning such a small area. All the working parts were clogged up with carpet pile. 
as an exercise in design it's incredibly impressive I'm not dissing that at all I'm just questioning its practicality it did a good job removing another long-standing stain, which this time I treated with the pre-treatment spray. The spin scrub nozzle is an ingenious contraption. I don't know how they get it revolving at the end of a vacuum tube, but again, in my view, a bit of a gimmick with the upholstery tool doing just as good a job. And no review would be complete without mentioning the 4.6 meter reach on the stretch hose. Handy when you're using the upholstery nozzle on stairs. I've gone on for far too long as usual, so I'm going to sum up by summarising the advantages and disadvantages of each machine on these slides, which I'll also reproduce in the description below the video, along with details of everything that I've used today. And my personal conclusion is as follows. If somebody said to me right now, I can only keep one of these machines, I would immediately give back the VAX Platinum Power Max. It's a no-brainer for me simply because George is an all-rounder at dry as well as wet vacuuming. I love the bomb-proof, no-nonsense design and the huge tank capacity. Don't get me wrong, George isn't without its design flaws. It's frustrating it doesn't have a cable tidy like you see with other pneumatic machines like Henry. And a bizarre design change by pneumatic on the bag inlet nozzle on George make it much more prone to blockages than you get on the comparable nozzle on a Henry or other pneumatic machine. I know this because ours blocked after a bit of dry vacuuming a couple of months ago. And the large fishtail nozzle is obviously much more proficient at cleaning up spot stains on a carpet than vacuuming the whole room as you'd be able to do with the Vax Platinum Power Max. But there are just too many flaws on the Vax for my liking. The fact that you can't dry vacuum with it. The infamous leak. Although I should point out this hasn't happened since. The pre-treatment one connector not engaging properly. The fiddly nature of cleaning out all the brushes. Smaller water tanks. Not to mention the way it leaks when it's idle. And finally, to my mind, there are some basic design flaws. Like the tiny slit the upholstery tools have to vacuum up the water when compared to George's which made George so much more effective at cleaning this dusty old suitcase than the Vax was when I attacked it earlier with this upholstery nozzle. Now the market for this sort of machine isn't exactly congested but there are other machines you could consider and I've included in this comparison table the Bissell Pro Heat Revolution which you can see is a similar price and spec to the Vax albeit without the hose. But let me know what machine you use and what machines you would recommend in the comments section below because it would be a really useful reference point for anyone watching this video. I've got too many vacuums now so I think I'll be having a bit of a giveaway when I finally get my Patreon channel up and running. Massive thanks for watching today's video, particularly if you've got this far. If you found it useful, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up below. And if you're new to my channel, as I always say, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of each new upload. See you soon.